Well, let's take a closer look now at how this morning's speech has resonated amongst the young electorate he was addressing. With me now, Sarah Rack. She's the editor of the Socialist paper, affiliated to the Socialist Party, and she's a Eurosceptic. And Michael Chesham, he's a momentum activist and a member of the Progressive In campaign, Another Europe is Possible. Thank you both for coming in. I, I just first of all, Sarah, was this a U-turn that we saw this morning? Yeah, it's a U-turn from Jeremy Corbyn's previous position, um, which was to be against the EU as a bosses club that brings together the rich of Europe against the interests of working class people across Europe. Um, and I think that's, that's a shame. I think that Jeremy Corbyn spoke about, um, for example, the steel industry, uh, which is an important issue at the moment. And I hope that, I think that he and Michael would agree that uh, in order to support the steel workers, you have to support their call for nationalisation of the steel industry to save their jobs and to save that vital industry. Um, but nationalisation of the steel industry would bring a, a Jeremy Corbyn-led government, for example, into a big confrontation with the European Union. Because they would not allow nationalisation of the steel yeah, industry exactly, under yeah. current legislation. And, Michael, in terms of that U-turn, how marked was it? Uh, you know, it's, it, it's funny. It's, I, I think it's something we're hearing a lot is, you know, oh, he didn't really mean it, oh, he's come late to the party. Actually, it's been clear for a long time that Jeremy Corbyn was going to be in favour of an in campaign. There seems to be a lot of briefing going around this, which I don't think is entirely well, in his fair. Well, words, even when he became leader, he said, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure we're having a close look at it. Um, sure, but, but I mean, he's, he's made several speeches, he's done lots of interviews, he's even written articles about, you know, the fact that he's going to campaign for Britain to remain in the EU. And I think the reason why that's different to uh, maybe the 1970s or opposing the Lisbon Treaty even is because of the context of this referendum. A vote to leave the EU under these circumstances is a vote to give a mandate to the right wing of the Tory party and forces to the right of the right wing of the Tory party to bash migrants, uh, to introduce free, uh, more and more free trade legislation, to introduce TTIP without the EU. Um, and, you know, <laughs> British capitalism is not an answer to European capitalism. There's, there's a huge irony in what you're saying because, of course, David Cameron is relying on Jeremy Corbyn's support and is the, the biggest benefactor of it. I mean, I don't think he's the big, biggest benefactor of it. I mean, but if you look at this, the people who are going to determine this referendum are, are, are Labour voters, working class voters um, and, and, and young voters. And they're missing from this debate. And that's not because they're lazy or stupid. It's because they're being ignored. Because at the moment, the discourse around this debate is a, is a debate between what, uh, two wings of the Conservative Party. What's good for business? Uh, what's good for profits, uh, almost a competition to see who can bash migrants the most. And that's why I think Jeremy Corbyn's uh, speech this morning was, was so good. It was an explicit socialist case for staying in the EU, which I think is, uh, was very powerful and authentic. Were you convinced by it, Sarah? No, I think that a key thing that could have changed that, the fact, I mean, I completely agree, is two wings of the Tory party is all that's being heard. But I think that a key thing that could have changed that is if Jeremy Corbyn had stuck to his previous position and had boldly led... Uh, a socialist leave campaign that you then would have had a, a big voice putting forward the the opposite side because in reality I think that you can't make a socialist case to stay in the EU and I think you just have to look at the what happened in Greece to show that that uh, you know I mean Jeremy Corbyn spoke about needing to work with our allies across Europe I think that we'd say that our allies across Europe are the working class people of Greece in their massive struggle against the absolutely endless austerity that they face, the um, one third drop in wages, sure, the uh, huge unemployment that, that they're faced with. Jeremy Corbyn, and Jeremy Corbyn. it's the EU that has that has imposed that. But Jeremy Corbyn would also see our allies in Europe as the working class across Europe, the left across Europe. Yeah. Those are our allies in Europe. Yeah. But, you know, they're the people we're fighting, going to fight with when we stay in Europe. And, uh, you know, you know, what happened to Greece was appalling and it happened uh, not because the EU or European institute, pan-European institutions are themselves right-wing and neoliberal and, and nasty, because the national governments or, that constitute the European institutions uh, pursued those policies. You know, it wasn't the EU that privatised our rail network. Uh, it was a British government. It was a, it was a, it was a, it was a Tory government. Um, and but it is an EU that says that you can't renationalise, for example, which 70% of the population in Britain support doing. That's not a minority yes. opinion, that's a majority of people. Yeah, absolutely. And Jeremy Corbyn, you know, correctly and boldly stood on that demand in yeah. the leadership election and yeah, no, won support for that. So, did you think, sorry, Sarah, do you think the perception will be, frankly, Jeremy Corbyn said what he said this morning, but his heart simply isn't in it? 
I think there'll definitely be a perception of that, yeah, that uh, unfortunately he's come under pressure from the right wing of the Labour Party to kind of fall into line behind uh, an, a policy that, in essence, um, backs up the establishment's needs, uh, as opposed to sticking to what won him such you know, great support in the leadership race, which was boldly saying things that the, the Labour right wing don't agree with, you know, £10 an hour minimum wage, the support for the NHS uh, against privatisation in favour of nationalising the railways, all of those things that he boldly said, despite the fact that the Labour right wing were not in favour of those things. Some would say he's entered the world of real politique. He's got to think about people who would be voting for him in the future. I think there's a huge constituency of people who uh, would be more likely to vote for him if he sticks to those bold policies, if he isn't cowed by the right wing of the Labour Party, because, you know, there are voters have deserted the Labour Party as they've been dragged in a certain direction by Tony Blair and uh, New Labour and yeah, Corbyn offers the chance for something different to that and that's why he won such huge support from people who weren't in the Labour Party at that point and that, that's the, the potential that there is to, to win support from those people. Mike, there, there's, there's nothing not bold, there's nothing sheepish or right wing about uh, campaigning to remain in the European Union. Uh, we are fighting on a terrain where a vote to leave the European Union is a vote to give Nigel Farage and a future Tory government a mandate to attack migrants and attack workers even more than they are now. Um, we are living in an era with the biggest refugee crisis that has happened in Europe since the end of the Second World War. And what we will get if we leave the EU is Fortress Britain. And Fortress Britain is not an answer to Fortress Europe. Um, and I, I just think it, it's, it's ludicrous to say that, the, that, that, that Jeremy Corbyn is somehow kowtowing to the right wing of the Labour Party. Um, leaving Europe would be bad news for the environment, bad news for workers, bad news for human rights. Um, there is a strong tactical case from a socialist perspective to stay in the EU. And that was very powerful um, this morning. OK, well, it's good of you both to join us. Michael Chesham, uh, Sarah Rack, thank you both for coming. Thanks. Cheers. Thank